Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Joe, you're a guy. Yes, and I never get tired of hearing that. What would be your idea of the most awesome birthday present ever? Um, a subscription to the Single Malt Scotch the Month Club, hand-delivered by Kate Upton on a 60-foot yacht. Someone has given this way too much thought. Okay, no, 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 no. This gift is for Xander. See, he's turning 18 next week, and I want to get him the most personal, most unique gift ever. Oh, you can get him a custom-made waffle iron that makes waffles with your name on them, or your family crest. The Burke family has a rabbit wearing a helmet. And I've given it too much thought? I'm gonna stick with my original idea. I'm giving him something really special and personal he'll remember forever. <laughs> What the hell was that about? That was Inception, baby. Yeah, that waffle iron is as good as mine. No, 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 no. What, what, what Lennox just said about giving Xander something personal, special, something he'll remember for the rest of his life, was that, was that code for, you know, her, um, precious flower? You calm down, Joe. Hey, I, I am calm, all right? I am totally under control. <laughs> yeah, you're drinking hot sauce. Ooh. I meant to. And you know what? Actually, that, that searing in my mouth is just giving me an idea. Xander's about to turn 18, right? If you let him. Okay, okay. So as soon as Xander hits that magic number, anything he's planning on doing with Lennox, who is a minor, goes from fun to felony. So all I have to do is keep him exhausted and occupied for the next five days, which means <laughs> I am going to be on him like your mouth on a wine glass. Okay, relax, Joe. Lennox and I share a special womanly bond. If anything were on the verge of happening, I would know about it because Lennox would have told me. Yeah, because that's every teenage girl's favorite part about losing her virginity is giving her aunt the heads up, you know? <laughs> Yo, aunt, check it. I'm about to wreck it. I guess you're still with me. Uh, so why are we stopping here? I thought you wanted me to give you a personal tour of the Stieglitz retrospective at the museum. Dude. Do I look like I want to see your Stieglitz? Get in here. No, this is a little uh, early birthday present, you almost legal adult you. <laughs> Surprise. You're locking me in a cage. Oh, if only it was that easy. Oh, Xander. You know, I've just been thinking, man. You and Lennox have been uh, dating for a while now, right? And you two guys have become quite close. <laughs> I want you and me to be that close. You know, I want to get to know everything about you. You know, like, uh, what terrifies you? <laughs> you know, what your, uh, threshold for pain is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're up, Stieglitz. Uh, Stieglitz is a photographer. I don't care. Isn't this fun? No. All right, hey, you know what? Tomorrow night, you and me, we're gonna be playing a little basketball. Oh, and the night after that, got us hockey tickets, buddy. Um, you know, <laughs> don't say no. Okay. That doesn't really leave me a whole lot of time to spend with Lennox. Huh. How about that? Oh, oh. Okay, I think we're warmed up. Now let's try some fast ones, huh? No, actually, I could use some ice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no. There we go. No, 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 no. Stay, stay in there, okay? Because the machine can sense fear. Go. So, Kira, uh, for the last one, I got 2x equals x. I can't be right. Ugh, Ryder, really? You can think about math when I just learned the truth. The what? I found out why you were suspended from school. For criminal activity? <sighs> yeah, um, it's not something I really want to talk about. Right. I wish you would. Okay, I, I could talk about it a little bit. <clears throat> I've been homeschooled my whole life, and I've never met anybody who had detention, much less suspended for marijuana. <sighs> They're so dangerous. <laughs> Even your mouth looks dangerous. It's, it's not, I just brushed. <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks. <laughs> That's my alarm. Well, where are you going? 
My mom's are super strict about starting family meals on time, and I'm not willing to break the rules. Unlike you. <laughs> Don't forget where we left off. I'll be remembering it all night. Hey, bro. You're looking more confused than usual. Kira just said that she loved that I'm a bad boy. Maybe she meant you're bad at being a boy. <laughs> well, she found out why I got suspended from school, and, and now she thinks I'm some kind of dangerous criminal or something. You dangerous? The one time you played Grand Theft Auto, you unionized the prostitutes. What do I do? She's the only girl in my shrunken social universe. I can't blow this. Well, if Kira thinks you're a bad boy, my guess is you better be a bad boy. So let's see what we can do here. <laughs> what up, dog? Hey, so I just dropped Xander off at home. After three hours of pitches, the kid practically needed a full body ice pack. <laughs> I think he was crying. Uh, Joe, take a look. Lennox posted this on our blog a couple days ago. I just saw it now. Read the title. Why urinals are inherently sexist. Not that one, the next one. I lost it, so what? No. No. No, 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 no. When I lost my virginity, all I lost was my misconception that having sex is a big life-changing experience. It's not. Don't believe the hype. Just because the two of you got naked Will you and... stop reading? Will you just stop it? Damn, man, I put all this time and energy into preventing the crime and the kid already robbed the bank. I just feel awful that Lennox's sex life is off to a lousy start. You know, sex should be fun and enjoyable. Are you kidding me? <laughs> sex is bad. Sex should be sad and horrible and shameful. Well, I'm sure it is for the women you're with. But Lennox deserves better. You know what? I'm going to help my niece have a more rewarding sex life. Rewarding sex? What is this, France? Oh, I've got just the perfect thing. You could... Hey, does Forever 21 make a chastity belt? A guide to intimacy, the saber and the lotus. A, a sex manual? Why the hell would you give Lennox that? Joe, she's already doing it. The ship has sailed. Yeah, but you know what? There's still a chance it could hit an iceberg and everybody will drown. We can't give up hope. What's done is done. So now the question is, how are you going to handle Lennox being sexually active? Good old-fashioned denial, you know? Because <laughs> uh, in here, Lennox is going to be that, that innocent girl I've always known. Well, you've only known her since she was 14. Yeah, a very innocent 14, OK? Not, not you, 14. <laughs> well, hey, I thought I invented that. <laughs> What's up? Nothing. Sounds fun. Um, <clears throat> you know, speaking of fun, I read your blog. <laughs> you know, the one about, um, about the thing? The, uh, first time? Oh, God. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious why you would blog about that to the whole world instead of, you know, just, like, coming and talking to your good old understanding Aunt Mel. My blog is for my peers, you know, other girls who might be having sex for their first time, and no offense, but I have a pretty strong feeling that's not you. Hey, I'm not blue, but I still enjoyed Avatar. Look, if you're going to be sexually active, I, I thought you ought to have this. Jeez, what is this, like 10,000 condoms? Well, you don't need condoms, you need information. Well, of course you need condoms. You need condoms. But, you know, your whole post was about how nothing the whole experience was. And I don't want you going through life thinking sex is just blah, when it could be pew, pew, andale, andale, leva, leva. It was your first time with Speedy Gonzalez? Sadly, yes. Oh, goody, the How to Have Sex book. And you marked your favorite pages. Yes, and highlighted bits that are especially useful. See, when I was your age, nobody talked to me about sex. I had to figure it all out on my own. That really doesn't sound so terrible right now. Believe me, it was. Yeah, I am totally self-taught. OK, well, it is so nice of you to take an interest in my sex life, Aunt Mel. And thank you for the literature. I will treasure it always. Well, you know, and if you have any questions... I'm good. Congratulate me, Joe. The Sabre and the Lotus was a big hit. Lennox said she really appreciated it. 
She did, huh? That's nice. Look what I found. No, the saber on the lotus? Where did you get that? In the Goodwill bin, along with a pair of her old sneakers. I don't know how that's gonna help the homeless. <laughs> Official. I have outlived my usefulness as an aunt. Now I'm just the hot woman who lives down the hall. <laughs> I'm not needed anymore. Oh, come on now. Stop that. Lennox still needs you, you know, in lots of ways. Name one. Well, she still needs your... money. That's the best you can come up with. You didn't give me a lot of time, all right? Oh, you took her to the dentist on Monday. No, that was me. So, um, want to watch some TV? I can't. I'm only allowed to watch public television Monday nights from 6 to 6.30. Wow. Okay. Well, we can uh, still sit on the couch and, you know, couch stuff. Hey, there's a couch right here. <laughs> Brought my dangerous mouth. Um, first, I wanted to hear more about your checkered past. I bet the stories are very exciting. Right, yeah. Uh, stories, 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 stories. There's so many to choose from. Uh, I, I remember this, this one time, worked for a gangster named Polly. Polly Walnuts. Go on. And uh, Polly had me collecting payments for the drug store. And I, this one time, I had to confront these rival drug dealers, Tony Soprano and uh, Nucky Thompson. I would have been so scared. What you got there? The past, when I was needed. Here's a wristband from when I took Lennox to see a Smash Mouth concert without her mother's permission. Uh, and this is from when I took her to see Rocky Horror without her mother's permission. <laughs> oh, belly ring, belly ring, nipple ring. That's mine. <laughs> oh, this is from when we dyed her hair blue without her mother's permission. Did you ever do anything with her mother's permission? No, because I was fun and cool, and now all that's gone. Oh, come on. Perk up. Hey, you know what? I made your favorite soup. What about squash? I made your second favorite soup. Potato leaf? I made you soup, okay? I'm not feeling very soupy just now, but you know, it means a lot to me that you're here, Joe. Amel, I need to talk. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, no! Go ahead, sweetie. Tell me everything. I am yours completely. Xander broke up with me. Oh, honey. He said he doesn't want to see me anymore. He won't even talk to me. Oh, that's awful. Well, that's why I'm here. I am cool Aunt Mel. I am warm Aunt Mel. I am all temperatures Aunt Mel. Do you think that Xander breaking up with me has anything to do with the fact that he and I did it? Well, it could. You know, like you said in your blog, sex doesn't automatically make things great between two people. So he goes around all like, ooh, I'm this sensitive artist, but then when I share this incredibly important thing with him, he dumps me? Well, then you know what? Fine. I'm never talking to him again. And if you just happen to be driving down the street and run him over, I'm okay with that. Okay, wait. Len, okay. I know you're upset, but, you know, why don't you talk to him before anyone runs him over? You shouldn't jump to conclusions. I'm not jumping to conclusions. I'm just coming to the sudden realization that Xander is an inconsiderate, selfish douche nozzle. <laughs> Did I help? Was I helpful? <laughs> and now Lennox says she doesn't want to see him anymore. Nobody treats my little girl like this. Well, Joe, you're not the enforcer. You know, you're the caregiver, the nanny. Well, I'm gonna nanny the crap out of that Xander. Okay, okay. Why does everyone in this family make snap decisions based on nothing and then fly off the handle? Because that's what the handle's there for, in case you need to fly off of something. <laughs> we don't really know what happened between Lennox and Xander. Yeah, we do. He hit it and quit it, didn't he? <laughs> You could make that argument based on the fact that he did exactly what you just said. So what are we going to do about that? Well? Nanny him, Joe. Nanny him good. <laughs> well, well, well. Should have known. Last place I would have thought I'd find you is where you've chosen to hide. I'm not hiding, okay? Just didn't want to run to anybody I know right now. Yeah, well, fortunately, you know me. Yeah, go ahead, hit me. Just a punching bag for everybody. Hey, look, I didn't come here to punch. Well, I'm gonna start off by talking. 
about what you did to Lennox. What I did to Lennox? What about what she did to me? She put all of our personal business out in public for the entire world to see. You did it in public? <laughs> no, the thing she wrote on her blog. I read it last night, and it's so embarrassing. That was my first time, too. That was... that was your first... wow. It was this incredibly meaningful thing just between the two of us, and then she goes off and tells everybody that it was lousy. Well, well, she didn't... she didn't tell everybody. It's on her blog, her Facebook page, and her Twitter. <laughs> and how disappointing I am is trending. <laughs> well, look, um... hey, man, if it's any consolation, everybody's terrible at it their first time. Well, actually, not... not everybody. <laughs> How could she do this to me? You know, I I care about her. I really care about her. She's my wallpaper, and not just on my phone, on my laptop, too. I mean, I love her. You do? You love her? Yeah. I thought she felt the same way about me. Hey, look, man. Um, you know, if it's any consolation, for some reason, women have this biological urge to express their feelings, okay? And they, 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 they will just express and express and express and express till they express your freaking ears off. <laughs> and Lennox being a writer, I mean, she expressed herself even more than that. Okay, so it's like, it's like how I work out my Sturman drawing and my artwork. You know, she's a writer. That's how she processes things, right? Yeah, I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> I do know this. When it comes to love, sometimes you just gotta play through the hurt. And if you really care about it like you say you do, and I think you gotta give her a second chance. So you're saying I should go back to her? I can't believe it either, but my lips are moving and those are the words that are coming out. You know? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yeah. What do you... This is really not the time or the place. <laughs> hey, Kira. Ryder, you remember my parents. Yes, of course. Please come in, Miss... Mrs. Uh... Ladies, women, please come in. Have a seat. We just came to tell you that Kira is no longer allowed to see you. What? Why? We only watched 20 minutes of Downton Abbey. We found out about your sordid past. Who told you I had a sordid past? I did. They're my parents. Of course, I tell them everything. So this is it, Ryder. I. We had a good run. H hold on, wait. Mrs. and Mrs. Guggenheim Schaap. Hear me out. Have a seat. We didn't even get to first base. That's... I'm sure she told you. I did. Please, I just need one minute. You guys don't know the whole story. Ryder, you may be able to bamboozle my daughter, but I went to Sarah Lawrence, and I know a thing or two. A buddy of mine brought a joint on an overnight trip. It was my first time even trying pot. I, I took a couple pops and I threw up on my friend Mitch. <laughs> That's it. I swear, on a stack of Bibles or constitutions or whatever sacred text is meaningful to your people. <laughs> family, I mean family. And what about all the other stories? The run-ins with the law, cooking meth with your high school chemistry teacher? That. Um, I made all that up. I, I was trying to impress Kira by pretending to be a tough guy. <gasps> Sounds like someone I know who tried to impress someone else by claiming to be on the Olympic rowing team. It worked. Ryder, not many boys would have the courage to confess a lie to their girlfriend's parents. But you did it for a sweet reason. So, we feel comfortable endorsing your relationship with Kira. Provided you follow all guidelines and restrictions imposed by our family. It sounds like there's a lot to learn. We'll send you the PDF. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you need any paperwork for me? Or... Just stop over tonight. We're having a gluten-free barbecue. Okay, save me a leg of tofu. Oh my gosh, that was so amazing. What? How you lied to my parents. That was my first time I ever tried pot. I wish I could lie under pressure like that. Must be all those police interrogations you've lived through. But, but Kira, I'm not lying. Shut up and kiss me, bad, bad boy. Hey there. Joe. Getting real-time updates from Lennox. She and Xander are getting back together. Wow, this reaction from the woman who wanted me to nanny eye Xander into a fine powder. You know, if Lennox is happy, I'm happy. You are a total flip-flopper, you know that? Well, when it comes to love, who among us is not a flip-flopper? And you know why this is happening? Because a certain niece had a conversation with a certain cool aunt. 
This is happening all because of you. You're sure about that? Positive. I mean, who else was involved? Nobody. <laughs> Lennox needs me, and I, well, I need to be needed. You know what, Mel? You're right. It was, uh, it was all you. Hey, by the way, look what I got at the market today, butternut squash. Mm, why? To make your favorite soup. <gasps> Chicken matzo ball? <laughs> Flip flopper. <laughs> well, that's the end of our date. I'll walk you home. Mm, how about I stay five more minutes? No. No, absolutely not. I signed a binding agreement with your moms, and that notary cost me 10 bucks. We are leaving now. Man, you know, that, that, that Kira is so sheltered. I mean, homeschooled, no TV, no late dates. How is she gonna survive in the real world? I mean, how is that girl expected to learn anything? Hey, she's still allowed to read. The Saber and the Lotus. No, 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 no. Okay, I'll wait two years. We'll just keep it right here. Are you kidding me? No way. Uh-uh, no. Your saber does not go in my cubby. Obviously, you have not read page 37. <laughs> Listen, Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. All set to shoot your segment? Oh, almost, Kyle. Hey, Joe. Yeah? Which pose says, elect me to state senate, but I'm also sexy, fun, and dateable? The finger on the chin or the hand on the hip? I think this is way more Beyonce. Burke, you're standing in the kitchen. The whole setup is really unbelievable. <laughs> OK, we are good to go. This is household safety spot. Take one and go. Hello, Toledo. I'm Councilwoman Mel Burke. And if disaster strikes, I want you to be prepared. <laughs> You know, it is easy to prepare yourself by stocking your kitchen with emergency water, canned goods, and a manual can opener, just like the cowboy days. Uh, and you just, oh, I'm used to using the, um, the electric kind, but... Hey, well, no wonder the cowboys used to always shoot at each other. <laughs> um, come on, Bessie. Allow me, Councilwoman. <clears throat> okay, like this, pop, there we go. Uh, I loosened it for you. <laughs> By banging it against the counter like a monkey. This is Joe, my can opener. Wow, can opener. That would be a promotion. Okay, how about can open, mouth closed? <laughs> All right, Joe, you can uh, take a few steps to the right. Well, I... No, so the camera okay. can't see you. Thank you. All right, um, <clears throat> where was I? Well, you were having trouble opening this can, and then uh, I came in and saved you. And now you want to talk about how important it is to have bottled water on hand. Absolutely. Everyone should have two good-sized jugs. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> that was great. We'll start airing news on Good Morning Toledo right away. You know, Mel, you are a natural on camera. Oh, I know. Back in college during spring break, I was one of the very first girls to go wild. <laughs> Listen, I'm losing my regular host for a little while. He's having a little medical procedure. Can't say much more than that, but, uh... I hear you. My mom's all about the... Not to mention the... <laughs> and even the... <laughs> say no more. So how would you like to be guest host for a week? Me? Hmm? Oh, that's very flattering. But I don't know, you know, with my work schedule and the state senate campaign... It would put your face in front of the voters. After all, most people vote for the most famous name on the ballot. As our forefathers intended. I mean, you think Lincoln would have been elected without that movie? <laughs> exactly. So, you on board? Uh, well, I can't say no to Ohio. Oh, that's great. <laughs> hey, Joe, she's in. Hey, fantastic. Wait, what's going on? Hi. I'm your new co-host. What? No, I'm the host. There's no co-anything. I, I sparkled on camera. You just opened a can. <laughs> A can of awesome. <laughs> See? The snappy back and forth, that's TV gold. That's what next week's gonna be all about. No, 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 I can do the back and forth all by myself. No, you can't. Yes, I can. <laughs> Wait, I forget which one I am now. <laughs> Final co-host. <laughs> Hey, good morning, buddy. You know what? I'm actually
actually feeling generous today. So how about you take a little break from your schoolwork and uh, you watch your aunt and I on Good Morning Toledo. Ah, I'd rather do chemistry or slam my fingers in a drawer. <laughs> yeah, I know. You can just press the mute button when your aunt talks. That's what I usually do in my head. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You take that shirt off. What? Why? It's the same color as my dress. Are you crazy? This shirt is cerulean, all right? What you're wearing there, that's, uh, that's like cobalt at best. No, 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 this is cerulean. Ryder, am I wrong? Yeah, like I want to get in the middle of this. We look like a singing duo from the 70s. No, you've got to change your shirt. Why do I have to change? Because you and I have to leave in five minutes, and your outfit doesn't involve complicated elastic undergarments. As far as I know. Fine, I'll change. No, you're lucky I look good in every color of the rainbow. Except, like, taupe or beige, because they sort of just, like, blah me out, but... Lennox, breakfast! Where is your sister? Oh, she got in late last night. I could tell by her distinctive door slam. What do you mean, late? She was at a yearbook meeting at Emma's house. Okay. Hype up, Joe. I'm sure they just watched a movie after the meeting. You know, innocent fun. Hey, everybody. There she is. Hey, everybody. And there he is. Mysteriously coming from the same direction as Lennox's bedroom. I'm sure nothing inappropriate happened. Ryder, get out. But, but this could be good. Out. Fine. You know, I, I miss all the fun stuff. One of these days, I'm gonna run away, build my own house in the woods, and then you'll be sorry. Hmm. So, uh, would you like to tell us why Xander is joining us for breakfast this morning? Absolutely. He spent the night here because it was the responsible thing to do. See? Joe? Responsible. Last night at Emma's, he had a few beers. Root beers, I'm sure. <laughs> right, yes, and with all of those imported root beers in his system, I didn't want him to drive home, so we walked back from Emma's and spent the night here, and then... Please, no more then. Stop it then. <laughs> Nothing happened, you know, after the beers, I wasn't really up for it. <laughs> oh, that's... that's so kind of you. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think your parents would be too thrilled to find out about all this. No, no, please, please, I'll tell them myself. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll totally come clean. You know, and if I'm lying, may I lose my ability to draw hands? That's serious, because he is very good at drawing hands. And breasts. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm sure we can all agree that Xander is very gifted, but I vote that we allow Xander to tell his folks himself, you know? But if you don't, I will unleash this overly built rage monster on you. Perfectly proportioned rage monster. It's understood. <laughs> All right, come on, Mel. We got a jam. But you got to change first. Yeah, don't worry about it. I always keep a freshly pressed suit and shirt in the car. For what? In case you're sitting at a red light and somebody suddenly offers you an executive job? <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> and that's why tomatoes should be your favorite vegetable. Actually, Joe, you may disagree with me, but tomatoes are a fruit. You know what? You're right. No argument there, because these seeds are on the inside. Indeed they are. And we will seed you back here right after this commercial message. And we're clear. So, how do you guys think it's going? Well, we're Pretty getting good. It, I think it was getting... terrible. What happened to you guys? It's our first day. This is Toledo television. You gotta bring it and bring it now. I wanna see sparks, chemistry, back and forth. Hey, I'm providing the back. Where are you with the fourth? Are you kidding me right now? I'm doing double duty here. You know why? I'm doing the back and I'm doing the fourth. Okay, you know what I think? I think you're still distracted about that thing with Lennox and Xander this morning. Oh, excuse me for being worried about a drunk teenage boy sleeping over in your niece's bedroom. You should be a little distracted about that, too. Sleeping, Joe. They were just sleeping. Ah, uh -huh. maybe they slept afterwards. Okay, before you schedule the honor killing, we both know Lennox and Xander are sexually active. And anyway, you should be happy that Xander was too drunk to have sex with Lennox last night. I... Uh, how long is that on-air light? Been on? Judging by the smile on Kyle's face, I... I think it's been on for a while. Okay. Well, it would appear that some of our personal conversation has made its way onto the air. And perhaps my co-host could be a little more discreet in the future. Oh, wait a minute now. You're the one that brought up the whole Lennox Xander thing. And apparently, the future has not yet arrived. And it's not like he hasn't slipped over before. What? When did that happen? That's not important. You see, we're talking about a, a underage boy and girl having sex in your house. You know, this is good television. Okay, uh, you know what? I think it is time to go to another commercial break. <laughs> no? It's not time for a commercial? Let me handle this. Kyle, we need to go to a commercial right now, okay? <laughs> That's not how it works? Okay, I'm learning a lot here. 
Dear God, if you really exist, please send a commercial to save us. Hey, look, before we go in there, I don't think Lennox is gonna be too thrilled with the fact we just talked about her sex life on TV. So, do you have a plan or maybe some body armor? Well, I am prepared to face her with honesty and humility and this $100 gift card. A bribe? Oh, that's just great parenting. Can it be from both of us? No, you're on your own, loudmouth. <laughs> hey, Lennox. What? Look, honey, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, sometimes stuff comes out of your mouth and you can't stuff it back in. <laughs> oh, my gosh, what happened? I, I didn't see it. Joe, she didn't see it. No, I'm sorry. I've, I've been studying for finals. But we can watch it together on the DVR right now. Yes, that is a great idea. It is? Hold on, I'm gonna pull this thing up right now. There it is. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. I just pressed permanent delete on that thing. What? <laughs> what is my problem? Now it's gone forever. Damn, Joe. You know, now you'll never get to see it. But you know what? You're not missing anything. Oh, I get it. You guys are embarrassed because you sucked. <laughs> but you know, that's okay. You're just boring and you don't have anything interesting to say. That's it. Yep, on the nose. <sighs> get away with it. She'll never find out. Xander, <laughs> what are you doing here? My parents kicked me out. They heard what these two said on TV. What did you say? <laughs> um, you know, it, it, we were on the air for two hours. Okay. It's hard to remember every little detail. They just said that we have sex all the time. Oh, unless I'm too drunk. That was just a tiny part of the segment. <laughs> Why would you say that on TV? In our, in our defense, that, that, uh, that on-air light, it's very tiny, very hard to see. <laughs> You know, it's not like we kicked you out of the house. I mean, uh, if we're pointing fingers, really, you know, we should point one at Xander's parents. They kicked him out because of what you said. Okay, look, Xander, I'm gonna call your parents right now and explain how this whole thing got blown out of proportion. What? No, don't call. Not so crazy about you right now. They said something about you being too permissive and going to hell. I'm not judging, just reporting. Okay, well, look, Xander, you can stay here until everything cools down at your house. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, sure, you can sleep in my room, duct taped to my weight bench. Joe, you're the nanny, not the prison guard. <laughs> I can be both. Look, honey, I feel really terrible about what I said today, so tomorrow I'm gonna open the show with a big apology. No, do not say anything on TV. Don't even mention my name. Well, I just thought if I clarified... You don't know me. I respect your wishes, uh, whatever your name is. Um, but who do I give this $100 gift card to that's made out to Lennox Scanlon? I'll make sure she gets it. Nell, Joe, how are my two firecrackers? Everybody online's love and the back and forth. Keep it up. You got it, producer man. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mel, we are hit. Okay. Uh, what made you so happy go Joe all of a sudden? You want to know what made me happy? For the first time in years, when I Google myself, financial scandal isn't the only thing that comes up. How often do you Google yourself? No more than anybody else. I mean, just, you know, sometimes at night before I go to sleep. I mean, the computer's right there, so I just, uh, it helps me sleep. Don't give me that look. You do it, too. Jamie, you wrote the book on school lunches. So, um, which is the bigger villain here? Tater tots or french fries? Well, actually, I watched the show uh, yesterday, and I think the real hot topic is what happened with the drunk boy who slept with your niece. Oh, uh, yeah, nobody wants to hear about that. <laughs> hey, well, maybe one or two people. <laughs> My wife and I got into a big disagreement last night about how you guys handled that thing with Lennox. Ah, and... no names, no names. My niece is a little sensitive, you know, a little too touchy-wutchy. <laughs> I'm too touchy-wutchy. No, guys, just, please, I'm trying to watch my favorite morning TV show. Neither one of you guys knows how to handle teenagers at all. Well, that's not really fair, because uh, le le <clears throat> the, uh, the girl who must not be named uh, <laughs> is not the only teenager we have living in our house. We actually have a teenage boy in our house, and we have none of these problems with him. So he's not getting drunk and sleeping around? God, no. <laughs> Trust me. Not Ryder. What? Please, please. Yep. Sorry, nope. But my point is uh, uh, that the, the nameless young man uh, is in no way sexually active, and I don't see anything like that happening for him for a, uh, a long, long time. Oh, God. Make it stop. Make it, make it stop. Ouch, I'm sorry, buddy. Don't worry, bro. I got your back. Oversharing is a two-way street. 
So the boy has social problems. He's odd. No, I mean, I wouldn't say odd. It's just that, you know, he, he just tends to uh, roll solo, you know? I mean, not, not like alone, you know, in his room with pornography or anything. <laughs> I don't think. I mean, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I see, he's, I meant that, um, I, he, he's a, he's a, he, I, what did I mean, Bert? Uh, you meant that it is time to go to our social media correspondent, Ashley, and her segment, What's Trending? Ashley? Well, Mel, turns out you're trending. Oh, good, that's good to hear. Okay, so what's the buzz, girlfriend? Check out this tweet I got seconds ago from at Lennox Scanlon 13. Aunt Mel talks a lot about how much other people drink, but it takes her three glasses of wine to unwind from a tough day. Hypocrite much? <laughs> My niece is such a practical joker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't believe everything you read on the internet, Ashley. Oh, and she linked this photo. <laughs> that, that could be anybody. <laughs> Strangling Lennox is gonna be a two-handed job. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, hey, calm down there, killer. All right, look, before we go in there, I want you to take a deep breath and count to ten, all right? Ten. <laughs> How could you do that to me? You totally humiliated me. Gosh, Aunt Mel, aren't you being a little too touchy-wutchy? That was on TV in front of a lot of potential voters. Oh, so it was an inappropriate forum for personal business? Ladies, please, let's not go all roller derby on each other here, okay? <laughs> It was an accident. So you talked about me on TV for the second day in a row accidentally? Exactly! As long as you're talking on that show, I'm not talking to you. Well, Lennox. She's gonna cool down, won't she? Look, Mel, you gotta expect some sort of reaction when you talk about a girl's personal life on TV. Whose side are you on, co-host? Hey, look, admit it. You know, you were wrong. I mean, you screwed the pooch. <laughs> hey, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, um, thanks for neutering me on TV. <laughs> it's a good thing that sex was never on my bucket list. <laughs> all I said was you were a virtuous young man who was respectful of women. Uh, yeah, because that's what all the women are looking for, you know, the guy with the hot, hot virtue. <laughs> you, you called me a sexual zero. Everybody starts at zero, pal. You know, I mean, in, until you score. <laughs> yeah, well, now I'm gonna have to move to another country where women have never seen TV. What are you looking at? Someone who did very bad things to a pooch. <laughs> Is water good, or would you prefer something a little, uh, stronger? Ah, it's very amusing, because people say I drink. Just water, thank you. <laughs> Do you see what Lennox did to me? She totally humiliated me in front of all of Ohio. Yeah, but you know what? Your name recognition is way up. I mean, people know who you are. Yeah, the crazy drunk to vote for. She didn't say that you were crazy. Oh, so you think all of this is just peachy? Well, it's not bad. I mean, they're paying us. Heck of a lot more than nanny money. Oh, and check this out. Someone create a little uh, fan page for me. Look at this. Ladies who were loco for longo. Uh, mm. <laughs> well, I'm very happy for you and those deranged middle-aged ladies. Bill and Joe, my two favorite guest hosts. I have some excellent news. The regular host, still in the hospital. That's excellent news? Oh, not for him. That facelift did not take. Frankly, he looks like a Picasso. But his botched surgery is your lucky day. Good morning, Toledo wants to extend your contract for the next month with a bump in pay. Really? Exactly how big is this bump? Bigger than my Aunt Eileen's butt. You don't know her, but it's big. <laughs> hey, Toledo wants you guys on the air. For a whole month? What are we supposed to talk about? Your constant disasters at home. You know, your lack of parenting skills is very relatable to our audience. Okay, so the only reason you want us on the show is to exploit my family's problems for late entertainment? How do I say this with sensitivity? Yeah. Wow. Make politics look noble. You know what, Kyle? Um, I did this to help my state senate run, not to put my family on display like lobsters in a tank. Look, Joe, um, you can do whatever you want to do, but I'm out. No, wait, please, we can't do this without you. You're essential to the show. Joe. I'm gonna pair you with Ashley, the new back and forth. She asks you about the kids, you give us a gruesome details. Hey, you can even trash your old co-host, huh? <laughs> Kyle, look, normally I uh, disagree with Mel on just about everything, but um, not on this one, man. I'm out too. Let me at least tell you how much the bump is. Okay. No, no, actually, don't, don't tell me. It'll just make me cry. I'm just gonna go home and whip out my computer and 
surge myself to sleep. My twin sister and I both stripped our way through college. I finally got out, but she stayed in the life. Eventually, she gained 200 pounds, but she kept stripping because it was the only work she could get. She was a philosophy major. Wow. Good Morning Toledo has really taken a turn into trashy. This is mindless. Oh, my God, I love it so much. Hey, guys. Hey. So how come Ashley's hosting? Yeah, what happened to you guys? Uh, well, what happened was... Uh, the truth is, they fired us. Yep, gave us the boot. Apparently, we just weren't uh, interesting enough. Oh, you couldn't just keep dishing dirt about us? Yeah, nobody really wanted to hear about that. Mm-hmm. No, that got old in a hurry. They did a good job with Ashley, because she is, she is a hot train wreck. Hey, I'm just happy no one's going to be talking about us on TV anymore. Yes, from now on, our family drama will stay in this house where it belongs. <laughs> In that case, I should probably take down some unflattering photos of Joe that may or may not have found their way onto the internet. <laughs> As it would be a good idea. Hey, look, about all this stuff this week, I mean, do you think we can just forgive each other, erase our Facebook timelines, and move on? Absolutely not. But maybe by tomorrow. And you know another gift card would really just speed the healing. Yeah, don't press your luck. Okay, well, Joe and I will go in the kitchen and make our dysfunctional little family a lovely dinner. Yes, and by Joe and I, she means Joe. Yeah, I thought that was clear. Oh, so just like a morning Toledo, I will be carrying you again. Yeah, right, like you can carry me and that ego. <laughs> Wait, the next got a gift card? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, sure, hold on. It's uh, Xander's mom for you. Oh. Hello? Well, yes, Xander's here. Where else would he be after you kicked him out? Was that right? Well, that is a very different story. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, Xander! May I just say, you look lovely tonight. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, Mr. Longo, that was superlative chicken. Life-changing. So, your mom said that she didn't kick you out at all. Would you like to tell me why you lied to us? It's just that it's kind of nice being here where Lennox is all the time. Oh, isn't he just the cutest? <laughs> but you spend every night in my room. I don't get it. What's the upside? You got me. It doesn't really make much sense. Oh, except you guys are gone a lot during the day. <laughs> Xander? Yeah? I'm gonna give you a uh, running start. I suggest you take it. recorded in front of a live studio audience. Why is chocolate tofu chunk taking up space in my freezer? Excuse me, your freezer? Fine, your freezer. That's ice cream for my boyfriend. Noah likes it and I like Noah, so I want to keep it around for a treat, or a post-treat treat, if you know what I mean. Unfortunately, I do. Ah, well, get used to it, because I think this relationship has real staying power. Yeah, I've heard that before. Right away, I knew we were a perfect match, you know? Mel Burke, public servant. Noah Butler, public defender. And I can tell you, he is an expert at getting people off. Oh, I, I, I see. There was a double meaning there. That's gross. <laughs> anyway, it's been 12 weeks, so we are halfway through stage one of my five-stage plan. Do you want to hear all five stages of my five-stage plan? I don't really think I have a choice. Stage one, get to know each other. Six months. Stage two, talk about moving in, another six months. Stage three, move in together, talk about marriage, get a dog, name it something cute like Gary or Beans, 12 months. Stage four, get married, talk about kids. Stage five, Mason, Brady, and little baby Tucker. You forgot about the stage where you get your head examined. Can I tell you something about your, about your practical, rational plan? Yeah, I don't think I really have a choice. What happens if you crap out in stage three? I'll tell you what happens. You're going to slide all the way back down to stage one. Pew! Except you're going to be three years older. And we both know you just had a little birthday that rhymes with, um, Schmerty Schmythe. Hey, I look damn good for Schmerty Schmythe. I'm just saying. Your plan takes way too long. I mean, come on, Burke. How many launch windows do you have left? What? Why don't you just... just cook? I think these eggs have gone bad. Shut up! You don't know anything! <laughs> Oh, 
those eggs. Carry on. I guess you're stuck with me. Woohoo! I got it! I got the internship! Congratulations, Len! I'm working at the Toledo Blade. I'm officially a journalist. Well, actually, an unpaid intern. Didn't, like, 80 people try out for that job? Mm-hmm. And I crushed them all. That's my little killer. I start tomorrow at the city desk. It's the hub of the entire newspaper. Everything flows through me and out to the reporters. Oh, plus, I get to listen to the police scanner. Oh, if you hear about any speed traps, text me. So I can drive extra careful like I always do. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna be on the road when I'm at the desk. It's mornings from 6 to 8. Wow, I'm impressed, Lennox. You know, you're not exactly a morning person. Morning? <laughs> you're barely like a noon person. I figure if I cut my hair and makeup routine down to 40 minutes, I don't have to get up until 4.30. Oh, 4.30? Oh, that's great, because you'll get, like, a full two-hour sleep. Ugh. Would it kill you to believe in me every once in a while? Yeah, geez, Joe. Would it kill you to believe in her every once in a while? You really think she can get up at 4.30? She's still in the room? No. No, not really. Hey, little Pookie. Hey, big Pookie. <laughs> I'm just gonna call you Noah, if that's okay. Surprise! Brought you these. My gift. Wow, no boy has ever given me raw, cut-up chicken pieces before. I mean, who needs flowers and jewelry? So get this. I had to empty my refrigerator and leave my apartment right away. My upstairs neighbor's tub overflowed, my place got flooded. Oh, so now you got, like, uh, an indoor pool. A carpeted one. Anyway, they said it's going to take like a week for the place to dry out, so I'm just going to run downtown and get a hotel room. Wait, uh, why don't you, um, move in here? Really? Here? Like here? Here? Sure. I mean, why stay in an expensive hotel? You know, what have they got? Free porn and little shampoo bottles? <laughs> We've got that here. Here, these are for you. You can stay here until your place is cleaned up. Keys. Sweet. So, um, what exactly is the rent here? Oh, well, I was thinking about a barter arrangement. You know, play your cards right and we can barter every night this week. I'm even a fan of morning bartering. I'm gonna get my things. Okay, so I know that you're like an impulse shopper, but that right there, that was completely off the rails. No, that was on the rails. What you said about my five-stage plan being too slow made a lot of sense. I just put this relationship in the microwave. Zip, ding, done. <laughs> Eric, everything that goes into a microwave comes out burning hot and tasteless. Yeah, but I don't have to wait three years to eat my dinner. Hey, what's up? Judging by the unhappy looks on your faces, I'm guessing you guys were interacting in some way. No, Mel's, uh, Mel's boyfriend is moving in here. Oh, so, uh, the house rules have changed. Just a smidge. So if I have a lady friend who wants to stay over... Dude, that's, that's not gonna happen. It's a double standard. No, no, it's one standard. You just don't meet it. Lennox. Yo, are you up? Hey, Lennox. Come on, wake up. It's almost 5 o'clock. Go away. Isn't today the first day of your internship? <gasps> it's my first day! I can't be late! Where's my phone, okay? Where's my purse? Where's my purse? Okay. Joe, get out of my way! Gosh, I can't be late! I gotta change out of my pajamas first! It was a good catch. <laughs> mm, you are so right. This antioxidant decaffeinated green tea is great. You know, who needs coffee with its dumb old caffeine? This egg white scramble was fantastic. Thanks, little Pookie. Uh, well, you know, be prepared for an incredible breakfast every morning, big pookie. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, look at that. You know, I hate to pry myself away from the good life, but, uh, gotta get ready for work. Mwah. So, let me get this straight. You, Mel Burke, a.k.a. Little Pookie. <laughs> you made breakfast? What, you lose a bet? Not at all. This is stage three, blissfully living together. No, it's not. Uh-uh. That's stage one lingerie right there. Everybody knows that in stage three, you go to sleep wearing sweats and ratty old t-shirts. Plus, you're wearing lipstick at breakfast. Uh, and, and, and why are we listening to the soundtrack of 27 Dresses? Because I listen to music every morning. 
Well, I've always been meaning to. Burke, living with somebody is about compromising and learning to work together. You two guys are just playing house here. No, this is a real relationship. This is real? What, 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 what's real about this? Are you kidding? I, I can't believe it's soy delicious. Is this some kind of a joke? What, decaffeinated green tea? I mean, we both know you're a barking monster without your coffee in the morning. I am not. Now shut your yapper and make me a pot of coffee before I get the shakes. See, now there's the Mel Burke I know and can barely tolerate. Coffee, now! <laughs>
For God's sakes, Lennox. Hey, hey, hey. We are going to let her sleep. What about letting me sleep? It's scientifically proven that rest prevents pimples. Look at my skin. <laughs> okay, that's hey, guys, it. Look, let it rain, dude. All right, look, I am doing her a favor. It's called tough love. If I wake her up right now, I'm not gonna be helping her. Internships are about learning things, and Lennox is learning a very valuable lesson right now. Yeah, yeah but you're kind of a suckwad sadist. <laughs> Thanks for letting me crash on your couch last night. No problem, as long as it never, ever happens again. <laughs> you gonna go for that phony baloney herbal tea again? <sighs> Screw that, I'm going straight Colombian. <laughs> mm. Mm, that's muy bien. <laughs> so I've been thinking about what you said last night, and I get it. You know, before we wear down the little bumps in the road, we have to wear down the bigger ones. In two days, Noah goes back to his place, and he'll take all the pressure off the relationship. You know, I can survive with dry hands for two days. <laughs> You are Navy SEAL material, Burke. <laughs> Morning, gorgeous. Hey, Joe. Hey. <laughs> Mwah. I don't know about you, but I slept fantastic. So did Mel. <laughs> I'm guessing. Uh, anyway, I got this email from my apartment manager. Turns out they found mold in the walls, so they're gonna have to gut the place. Uh, gut the place? Is that something they can, they can fix in, like, two days? <laughs> it's more like a couple of months, yeah. But the good news is I'll be staying here with you a little longer. I mean, you know, if, if that's okay with you. Well... <laughs> Two months living here with me. Wow, that is quite an attractive offer, but, um... Well, I have to be totally honest with you. I'm having a contractor start work here next week. Yeah, he's tearing out the heating and air. Lots of duct problems. He's got to totally deduct them. Yeah, it's going to be a real mess, right, Joe? Yep. There's all kinds of messed up stuff going on inside this house. Yeah, I'm going to be staying in Lennox's room, so uh, I'm sorry. No room at the inn. Oh, well, you know, I mean, you can't help what has to be done, right? I'll just move out of your house like we planned. Mm -hmm. It would be so great if you just let this go without saying anything, but that's not gonna happen, is it? Not a friggin' chance. <laughs> Why did you just lie to that guy? Because I honestly believe in this relationship. But if he keeps living here, it's doomed. You know, I should never have fast-tracked this relationship. It's time to go back to stage one. Wait a minute, you put your boyfriend in the microwave and now you want to go back and put him on a slow simmer? <laughs> that's not gonna work. What do you know? When have you ever cooked a man? <laughs> I know once you burned him, it's time to move on to a new piece of meat. <laughs> Oh, my God, this is gonna be so epic. Just wait for it. My future is ruined. I just called my boss to tell him I was running late, and he told me not to bother coming in at all, ever, done. How could he fire me? He wasn't even paying me. Lennox, you're gonna have to wake up when your alarm goes off next time. That's not my fault. My alarms malfunctioned, all of them. Really? Because I was walking by your room about 5 a.m., and I saw you hitting snooze buttons like you were playing whack-a-mole. Wait, you were there, and you didn't wake me up? I wanted to, believe me. I wanted to, too, but uh, Joe said it was tough love. Wait, you were there, too? I, I was sleepwalking. <laughs> and I am now. How could you do this to me? Look, not waking you up was your wake-up call, all right? Come on, Lennox, how are you gonna get up your first day in college, your first day at your real job? I mean, growing up means you gotta take a little bit of responsibility for yourself. You set me up. You wanted me to fail. It's called tough love. I can't leave out the tough part. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, Joe. Hey. Don't mind him. Here, take this in the other room and warm up the couch for me. <laughs> so how'd your slow-cooked evening go, huh? What'd you guys talk about? There wasn't a whole lot of talking. The language was mostly body language, which is my native tongue. I thought you went back to stage one to talk about the big stuff. No, this is so much better. You know, no stress, no pressure, no nothing. It's like a dream. Sooner or later, you're gonna have to wake up from your stage one coma. Nuh-uh. Hey there, posters. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt, but, you know, I was just reading this uh, magazine, and I came across a very interesting relationship quiz for couples. 
I mean, I'm not a couple, but you guys are, and a great one at that. So, um, how about I give it to you? I don't think so. So you're gonna love this. It's called, um, is it meant to be or meant to be over? <laughs> that sounds great. Let's do it. Yeah, sure, because you had two margaritas at dinner. It's three, and I'm ready to play. See? Look at that. He's ready to play. I like this guy. All right, here we go. First question. Uh, do you want kids? Yes. Yes. All right, how many? Three. Two. But I could do three. Mm, I bet you could. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 thanks. Okay. Where do you want to live? City, suburbs, personal island? City. City. Jinx. You owe me a kiss. Okay. Hey, nothing that, nothing that, nothing that. Uh, okay, school, public, private, or nuns? Public. Public. Yeah, because we're both public officials. Yeah, two of the cutest public officials ever. We are. Oh my God, can we not celebrate yet, please? <laughs> On the beach. At sunset. With a hundred doves. And all of our friends. And our dog, Gary, can be the ring bearer. <laughs> Meant to be. <laughs> Wow, so far uh, 18 for 18. I was wrong, you know? This, this, um, this actually isn't that much fun. Whoa, 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 Quizmaster, keep going. No, what's, what's the point? You, you guys are compatible. Oh, come on, next question. We're going all the way. Okay. <laughs> this is the last question, thank God. Are you in love with someone else? Yes. What? I, um... Her name is Larissa, and uh, we broke up years ago, but yeah, you know, part of me will always still be in love with her. But hey, you gotta move on with your life, right? Wow. <laughs> you were ready to be in a serious, committed relationship with me while there's still someone else you're secretly wishing you could be with? I just wanted to be honest. Really? I'm second place? Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> She's already married, okay? And, and don't worry, because after her, there is no one that I would rather be with than you. Wow, that's what every woman wants to hear. You know, it says here some men actually like to cuddle. How about that? Hey. Hey. I'm guessing um, you weren't here to sleep on my couch? Nope, I've got my own bed all to myself again. Oh, sorry, Burke, I shouldn't have thrown that stupid quiz at you. Ah, no, you know what? You did me a favor. It was a wake-up call, and unlike Lennox, I actually woke up. <laughs> no, it wasn't the guy, but now I've got no guy and no plan. And in a few years, I'm gonna be smorty. Relax, okay? Look, there's somebody out there for you. And you know what? Today, more than ever, I mean, women are having kids well into their... schmifties. I don't know. I mean, how am I ever gonna be comfortable living with anyone? You look like you're pretty comfortable right about now. Yeah, well, that's because it's easy for me to be myself with you. I don't care what you think about me. Oh, I don't care what you think about me either. <laughs> See, and this is why we get along so well. Because deeply, way down deep, we don't care about each other. <laughs> hey, you don't happen to have any, uh, uh, you know me so well. That I do, Burke. <laughs> that I do. So, Mr. Pike, honestly, it's, it's, it's really kind of my fault that Lennox didn't show up. You know, I should have woken her, and I didn't. And you see, sir... Wow. <laughs> honestly, uh, you know, a simple no would have sufficed. <laughs> and your mother, too. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Drew. Hey. Thanks. For what? I couldn't get your job back. Yeah, but you tried. You know, and it is my fault. I'm... Should have gotten myself up. You're right, you should have. Maybe next time. Ugh. Maybe we're... You can't even be gracious for 10 seconds. <laughs> I could if I wanted to. <laughs> Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta tell you, Mrs. Bang, you snagged a real good one here. This, uh, this, this back massager, I think, is the steal of the whole yard sale. Oh, and uh, Mel promised me that this one in particular, she only used on her back. So. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I cannot believe the crap people bought. Yeah, I can't believe the crap your aunt owns. I heard that. My stuff is not crap, it's vintage Americana. A singing bass? You would not believe how funny that is when you're drunk. On life and friends. Well, 
Well, now that you've come down from your garage sale high, I can tell you my news. I got approached about running for the state senate next year. I'm on a short list with three other people. It's a good thing we kept this. Awesome! Way to go! You're the best! Mm, that must be what it sounds like in your head all the time. It's pretty close. It's great news about the Senate thing, Aunt Mel, but is it as great as this fantastic parade of presidents? <laughs> you sold your ratty electric blanket, your lint lizard, your old nightstand, your lava lamp. Whoa, back up. My old nightstand? To who? Andrew, that, that dude down the street with the Porsche and the vaguely racist lawn jockeys. But you emptied it out first before you gave it to him, right? No, it was just some old junk in there, a couple of matchbooks. Oh, and a, a videotape of the 2002 World Series. Spoiler alert, the Angels won. We were gonna toss it, but um, Andrew said he was a fan of baseball, so he was psyched to have it. Oh, really? Uh, Ryder, I, I need you to do me a favor. Um, I need you to sell this bass. Yeah. What? Yeah, go door to door. But how am I supposed to do that? Just find a drunk who needs a good laugh. <laughs> how could you sell my nightstand? Well, you told me to get rid of all your old junk. OK, that tape was not junk. World Series was code for a very personal, very private recorded moment between me and my then boyfriend. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Um, young Burke made a little sex tape, huh? No, I would never do anything like that. It was a love tape. <laughs> you did this to me. Well, how was I supposed to know 2002 World Series Game 7 was code for sex date? How could you not know? <laughs> did you really think I had an emotional connection to a baseball game? You know, I was on the short list for State Senate, Joe. Now that's over. You know, now that there's a tape out there of me playing ball. <laughs> voters don't really like that. Honestly, it depends on the demo. I, I, I think males 18 to 35 might actually vote for you like twice. <laughs> oh, this is the worst thing ever. Hey, you know that convict I've been writing to? New worst thing ever. What convict? Need more details. I told you, the guy from the nonprofit I'm volunteering at, guilt free. That's about guys in jail? I thought that was about non fat cookies. Innocent people languish in jail because of our corrupt judicial system. We research their cases and write them letters of support. Honey, can't you be more like me and meet guys in bars instead of behind them? What did this guy do? He didn't do anything. That's what I came to tell you. His case is being reviewed, and they'll be able to prove he was wrongly accused. Yeah? What was the choir boy charged with? <laughs> Taking money from a bank. <laughs> you think bank robbery is pfft? At least it's not pfft murder. Barely any money was stolen, and none of it by Devin. Yeah? Well, he's still guilty in the court of Joe, all right? So no more letters to or from this guy. Why do you hate justice so much? <laughs> This is just great. My reputation is ruined, and Lennox is gonna be a prison wife. Where, where are you going? Oh, I thought this would be a Danny time to get a pedicure and Instagram a selfie. I'm going to get my tape back. Lennox, this computer. Hey, dude. Can you get Lennox for me? My lawyer gave me five minutes with his computer in the, uh... Guards get antsy if I go over. Guards? Oh, you're the you're the guy in the big house up the river. <laughs> Slammer man. How's it going, man? What are you doing on my computer? Oh, it was ringing, and I wouldn't want you to miss a call from your friend in prison. You can't tell Aunt Mel and Joe. Oh, can't I? All right, what if we just go into the kitchen and pretend this never happened? Maybe I don't want to. Come on, Ryder. You and Devin are kindred spirits. Think about it. He was unjustly sentenced for a crime, and you were unfairly suspended for a crime. That's true. Yeah, you guys are like brothers. Badass brothers. Yeah, we are. And homies don't rat out homies. Hey, guys? Guys? Anybody? I only get to video chat like once a week. <laughs> Hold on, some Barbie's begging for charity. You got 60 seconds. I'm about to close a deal by a shopping mall. Go. Hey, it, 
might be a little late, but welcome to the neighborhood. I'm Mel Burke from down the street. 55 seconds. Okay, uh, my nanny accidentally sold you a nightstand, and it's extremely sentimental to me. I'd like to buy it back from you, along with any contents therein. I will even throw in this shiny new Jackson. Might help you with that mall deal. Wait, I know you. You're that councilwoman who put in the speed bumps in front of the elementary school. Guilty as charged. That was my shortcut home. I drive a Porsche. And that street in front of the school was the only place in town I could really open her up. But you see, while you lost your racetrack, um, others gained a more important public good. There are young, innocent lives. See, the way democracy works... Ooh, time's time. up! We appreciate your views. Mr. Bite Me. <laughs> is over or you can sell the rest of the furniture and the house i'll just live in a box behind the supermarket with the rest of the sex perverts relax would you look making a sex tape is hardly gonna ruin your life i mean heck a lot of people use it as a springboard to move on to bigger and better things you know like um m marrying rappers thanks for helping Look, this Andrew guy is probably not going to even watch that tape. First of all, he'd have to find a VCR to watch it on. I mean, that alone could take years. The uncertainty is almost the worst part. And how can I live never knowing when the other boob might drop? Hey, great news. They're going to show your tape on TV. What? Already? Yeah, I just saw the promo. They're going to show the whole thing uncut, not just the highlights. I'm just going to go take a nice warm bath with my toaster. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ryder, what are you talking about? ESPN is uh, rerunning the 2002 World Series. You know, the one you like so much. Oh, the actual World Series! The one without all the close-ups! Oh, that's fantastic! I knew you'd want to know. Oh, this news is so exciting that I need to go drink alone. Uh, right after I record that baseball game. <laughs> I rarely understand her. Few do, yeah. So, Joe, I've got a uh, proposition for you. Okay. How about we go half seas on this vintage pinball machine I found on eBay? You've been browsing the internet for antiques? What, you already go through all the porn? <laughs> uh, no, this is actually really cool. I played the same pinball machine in Andrew's garage when I moved the nightstand in there. It's in his garage? That's, that's fantastic. That's amazing. I, I, I have to go tell your aunt. She's gonna be so happy. <laughs> Something's going on in this house. Hey, the problem is solved. Oh, good. Did you bring vodka? Because this wine is wussing out on the job. No, 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 I know where the tape is. It's in the jerk's garage. And you know what? You and I are going to steal it. What? Steal it? Are you crazy? Do you have a better idea? Yes. We should set his garage on fire. Oh, arson. That's great. What's plan C? A drone strike? Oh, I wonder if I can get my hands on a drone. You know, my dad still has some pull in D.C. Yo, Burke, 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 Burke. <laughs> Focus. Okay, fine. If we're gonna break in, we have to do it at the right time. The guy can't be there if we're gonna steal it. Steal what? Steal home. We are just talking about that great game, you know, where the hitter, batter, runner guy uh, stole home. Someone stole home in the World Series? Well, well, they, uh, you know, they didn't exactly steal home. It was more that the, uh, the catcher allowed him to score. Well, the catcher was young and naive and didn't realize that the whole world would have a chance to see the big play. This all sounds very exciting. Did he slide in head first? I don't recall. Did he, Mel? I can't talk about it. How did I miss this game? Burke, okay. Tonight is the night. Really? But all my black sneaking around clothes are in the wash. There's a big Mud Hens game tonight, right? This guy never misses a game. He's even got Mud Hens stickers on his car. I mean, what kind of an idiot puts stickers on a Porsche? Hmm. An idiot smart enough to afford one and then not lose it in a financial scandal? At least I didn't videotape myself losing my car. Anyway, tonight from 7 to 10, that's going to be our window. <sighs> okay, tonight at 7 o'clock, we will officially become criminals. Oh, this could be the worst thing ever. Devin just called me from prison. <laughs> You have to stop saying stuff like that because it causes this. He was finally exonerated. He's being released and he wants to come over for dinner. What? Why? He wants to personally thank everyone who helped work for his release. Oh, especially the cute blonde underage ones. Couldn't he just, you know, send a thank you gift like a fruit basket or balloons filled with heroin? I want to see him. After all these months of corresponding, I feel like we've really connected. 
Honey, you can't come over here. It's bad for my image. Yeah, your image, because that's the worst part about having a criminal here in the house. Devin's not a criminal. And you're on record advocating for the rehabilitation of ex-cons. You said it was society's duty to get them back on the right path. Yes, but not on the path to our house. <laughs> if you ever meant anything you said ever and you have any heart at all, you'll let him come. I have a heart. Oh, fine, your low-life pen pal can come. Good, I'm glad you guys agreed. Hey, for the record, I do not agree. Well, I already told Devin he could come tonight at 7. At 7 tonight? Nope, nope, that's not gonna work. No, Mel and I are actually busy tonight at 7. Sorry, you're gonna have to call and cancel. I can't. He got released, so I can't call him in prison, and he doesn't have a phone yet. Well, can you call his ankle bracelet or something? <laughs> he doesn't have an ankle bracelet because he's not guilty. He's coming tonight, so get on board. This is great. This is just what we need, an ex-con in the house tonight. I mean, it's like, you know, welcome, sit down, pull up an electric chair. No, 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 think about it. This could be a good thing. The dinner gives us an alibi. We sneak out for five minutes, get the tape back, and we're back here eating risotto with porcini like nothing ever happened. You are making risotto with porcini, right? Because I love that. You know what? That, that plan might actually work. Yeah, plus, if anything seems fishy, you know, it wouldn't hurt if there just happens to be an ex-con in the immediate vicinity. So you'd be okay to pin our crime on an innocent man? Not pin, just gently lean it against him. I don't know if I feel great about that. Yeah, well, buck up, Longo, because tonight we ride. <laughs> Please don't do that. Tonight, we bounce. No. Come with some powder, because tonight we bust a cat. They don't even own a gun. Oh, is that what cat means? <laughs> YOLO! You know, Devin, seeing you uh, fresh out of prison and sitting here next to Lennox, it's really hard to put into words what I'm feeling. But it's good things, right? <laughs> I don't know how I'll ever pay Lennox back for all she did. Oh, you don't have to pay her back. Not at all. I'll just eat your meal, go home, we're square. I just feel like I ought to do something. You welcome me into your house. People like you usually steer clear of me. What kind of people are those? <laughs> those are those are crazy people. <laughs> wow, look at the time. Um, actually, uh, Mel, we better get cracking on that salad, it being almost 7.30 and all. Shoot, uh, yeah, you know what? I will help because salad is like a two-person job. <laughs> You know, I feel you, my brother. After I was slapped for my drug offense, everyone I was close to abandoned me. On Facebook. All right, so look, I did a little more recon. This is what we're up against, all right? That's the garage, and that's the windows. What's that? What's what? That right there. That's an alarm sign. How could you miss it? It's bright red and says alarm. Actually, it says alarm. Oh, well, maybe they were trying to keep out the urglers. What? I... The bush is blocking the sign. Look, if we don't go right now, we're going to miss our opportunity. You know, how are we going to disable an alarm without any professional know-how? That's what prison is mostly. A bunch of criminals teaching each other how to do a better job of stealing stuff. Go on. <laughs> nah, that's boring. You don't want to hear about sure it. Sure we do. No, it's very interesting, sociologically speaking. You know, why people do the things they do. Yeah, or, you know, how they do them. Like, specifically, um, residential jobs. Say, with, uh, I don't know, alarms. <laughs> Where is this going? He's our guest. It's polite to ask guests about their interests. The fact is, I don't have a lot of first-hand knowledge of this stuff. My buddy just told me to sit and wait in the car while he got some money. Didn't know it was someone else's money. What about your cellmate? Did he ever disable an alarm? Oh, yeah, yeah. He talked about it all the time. He was quite the burglar. <laughs> so how do you do it? Oh, I don't know. Most of the time, I just tune him out and study my Bible. So this guy's useless. Yep. Okay, uh, actually, look at the time. You know, I have to go outside right now. Uh, it's time to trim the, uh, rosemary. Yeah, we, uh, wait, I'll go with you, because rosemary really is a two-person job. Like salad. <laughs> Greens seem very important to them. I'm just trying to get through my time here, man. You're not in prison. We have pudding pops here. How do you spend six months in prison and not learn how to disable an alarm? I don't know, the guy's not a good student. I mean, clearly he wasn't paying attention, you know? <laughs> Prison is what you make it. <sighs> All right, so we're really gonna do this? I mean, what about the alarm? What if we get caught? No, we're not gonna get caught because we're not gonna be doing this. I am. But we're a team. No, Mel, look, you need to stay here, all right? We can't leave the kids alone with, uh, Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> Devin, the Bible study kid? What, are you afraid he's gonna baptize somebody? <laughs> no, no, look, it's, it's more than that. I mean, if you get caught, your career's over. Me? I'm working here. You know, I'm already paying for a crime I didn't commit. <laughs> and if I have to, I can do it again. Joe. Mel, shh. 
Look, if I don't come back, just, just promise me one thing. Anything. When that kitchen timer beeps, you take the chicken out, okay? <laughs> but you make sure the juices run clear, because no one will get food poisoning from a Joe Longo chicken. Prison for a crime I didn't commit was rough, but the worst part was knowing that my best friend betrayed me. He did the crime, but I did the time. I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry that you had to go through that, Devin. You know, I gotta go do a thing at a place with a guy. <laughs> Wait, stop, oh, the break-in's off, okay? I can't let you go up the river or down the river or whichever way the river goes. <laughs> what? So the tape gets out there, my career takes a hit, I go to beauty school. I spend the rest of my days sweeping up little old ladies' hair. It's not a bad life. <laughs> but I can't let you go to jail for me, okay? So just forget the whole thing. Forget it. But I'm here and, you know, I'm pumped and the window's open. Get in there! Okay, what are you waiting for? I got it, I got it. I'm gonna go first. Okay, I'm gonna go first. Right. Let me go first. Oh, you know what? If only you'd say that to your old boyfriend, maybe we wouldn't have to be breaking in here right now. Right. Hey, look at this. It's an old vintage Miss Pac-Man. Oh, this is my first true love. She was always hungry and ready for more. Mm, set up sort of an unrealistic expectation, huh? Yeah. That was good thinking, you know, with the plug. Thank you, yeah. All right, look, you take that side, I'm gonna take this side. Go find your nightstand, all right? Hey, be as quiet as you can be. Okay. Ah, my nightstand! Will burn! I need my nightstand! Oh, yes, my tape is here. Oh, we are good, we are robbing geniuses. <laughs> He's back. Hi, hi, in there, in there, in there. Why is he home so early? I don't know. I'll go ask him. <laughs> okay, okay, look, we just need a plausible story to explain why we're in here. Oh, so you kidnapped me. What? Why would I do that? For ransom. I'm a blonde. I'd be all over the news. <laughs> Wait a minute. I worked for you for three years. I do laundry, cook your meals, and I just decide to kidnap you. Why didn't I just kidnap you on day one? Well, you snapped, okay? There's all kinds of holes in that story. I don't like that story. <laughs> you know, Joe, if I had to be caught in a botched break-in to recover a sex tape with anyone, I'm glad it's with you. It's not something you hear every day, but right back at you, Perk. It's gone. You know, Longo, all that stuff I just said, that was just, uh, that was just the crime talking. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. Why aren't you going? I'm just thinking that Miss Pac-Man would look awfully good sitting next to my workout bench. Would <laughs> you just go? All right, all right, I'll go. Shh. Don't, don't you shush me. Shh. Let's go. Shh. <laughs> We did it! We did it! All right, don't get cocky until we get inside. Oh, I can get as cocky as I want, because I committed a felony and didn't get caught. <laughs> Said George Clooney in what movie? Where have you guys been? Hey, that's the videotape you sold to Andrew. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. 2002 World Series. How'd you get it out of his garage? They just went across the street and stole it. Stole it? Man, why do I keep running with the wrong crowd? I gotta get out of here. If you ever need someplace safe to crash, I can help you. How could you try to involve Devin in a crime? Well, I, actually, we didn't involve him. We just asked him a couple of questions. Yeah, but most he was a criminal consultant. Yeah. You're both terrible. To do all of this for a tape, what kind of tape could possibly be worth this? Oh, a sex tape? That's gross! You don't really love baseball? You know, baseball is not America's only pastime. Oh, come on, writer. You don't need to be around these bad influences either. Hey, it was a love tape! <laughs> Thank you, Joe, for saving my ass in so many ways, from so many angles. Exactly how many cameras did you use on this thing? See you.
you, Joe. You're a good friend. You know, you risked your reputation or whatever's left of it to save me. Well, it wasn't a big deal. You know, it's like I always say, friends don't let friends' sex tapes go viral. So. <laughs> Hope you're gonna destroy that thing. Mm. No, I'm gonna keep it. Are you kidding? This is a part of my past. It's who I am. And if memory serves, I look pretty damn good in it. <laughs> in fact, I was thinking about throwing myself a solo viewing party later. Yeah, all right, I guess I can see why you'd want to keep it. <laughs> You're welcome. My tape! Yeah, you'll thank me when you're president. <laughs>